Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, official... Miss Jamaica, what's going on? You know, my dear, I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us, share us on all social media platform. Anywhere you can type Boss Talk Podcast 101, you can find us and you're going to love our content. I guarantee you. Man, hey, y'all do what she say. I've been following her lead for a while, man. I mean, she cooks good, take care of me. So I, I know she ain't lying to you. I put everything on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, man, we got my guy, man, back in the building, man. One more again, Mr. Ayatollah Marv, straight out of Bompton, California, is going whoa, whoa. down That's right. today. And I, man. I'm going to give an amen. Miss Jamaica can cook her ass. <laughs> <laughs> I come to Texas for the food. Man, we just happy to have you, man. I just wanted to, I really want to go into the fact of, man, like, you know, the Piru gang. They came from, now I want to say that they came, you've given me the history on it before. I know it was Treetop. Was Treetop before Pyru? Yes. And that's what, and it, it was the streets, right? I, the, I, yeah, the name of our streets. Name of your street. You Elm, are, Elm, Elm Street. Night street. Nightmare on Elm Street. We ran Freddy Cougar out of California. Okay. And Poplar Street, Maple Street, Brazil Street, Magnolia Street, and all of our streets were named after trees. Well, I, I, and for some reason, I was thinking, you know, I, I, we've talked before, but okay, the, the Crips basically are a whole separate entity. The Pyrus didn't come from the Crips, right? No, no, not at all. Okay, well, explain to me where the Pyrus hide really, like, let's go back down the history history lane and just fit. Give, and, and I want to know why they wear red, too. If they're not, if they wasn't bloods up front, why do they wear the same colors? Well, actually, Pyru Street is a street in Compton. So that makes us citizens. And the street is a big street and it had a lot of boys on it. So it was a, the Piru boys originally. And they, we had a, a, a conflict. And when they asked them, who was who these guys? They said they was Pyrus. And when the Pyrus, then they end up calling us roosters. Okay. So a rooster is red. So the red rooster is assimilated with bloods because bloods were red. Okay. So it came to, to the flourishing. Pyrus became roosters and this and this and that. So we assimilated with the L.A. gang. The Five Nine Brims was one of the first blood sets in L.A. that went against the Crips. And so the Pyrus formulated and became a brand. I, I want to ask, because No Jumper is, is a show, and I've seen you on No Jumper. Um, and I, and I, shout out to them guys, but... Back in the days, the way they're set up now, you know, you have different sets that just all, you know, operate within that realm, come through there because of the uh, cause of California, cause of L.A., Compton, all these different, you know what I mean, sets in that area. But they're able to go through, do interviews and all that. And it always amazed me, like, dang, how do they get along? And they all from different parts. You know, being somebody from Texas, you see that and you thinking they can't be in the same building. But when you look at that show, a lot of times it's different sets always coming through there and I just always was well, tripped I mean, out about it. When I was on No Jumper, it's way in the valley. So it ain't like Oh, it's in the that, valley. Okay. That white boy ain't in the hood. Ain't <laughs> in, in the hood. No, no, he ain't doing it on on, on Ventral. He ain't doing it on Compton Boulevard. He's doing it way out in Van Nuys somewhere. Okay. Okay. So you're transporting out there. So it's just like I come to Texas these interviews and everybody clout chasing so it's something to get my face on here and I'm gonna talk about my set and I do this and I do that and I'm just like so yeah that's a, a avenue of exposure to everybody okay you know so and I, and that works out there because that's kind of what we we are the same like people that's trying to get known for something or do what they do or or just the history of something that's what these podcasts have turned into right you know where everybody shout out to my boy cam capone news i rock with cam capone news for sure like i've seen you on there as well like um I, I always thought about like Compton, right? Mm -hmm. And I think about like I'm a I'm when I come to a to a city or uh, wherever I go, it's like, man, where is the project? What is what is the project? Where is the projects for what do the people that say, you know, 
the, the well, let me say this: for, impoverished for L.A. or for, com- for Compton, for we ain't Compton. got no impoverished. Pro- we no, ain't got no projects. No projects. They, well, they want to say, well, uh, Slick came on with, oh yeah, it's projects. No, there is no have, project. Every, it's single family homes. Fruit Town, West Side, Piru, Capitola Park. We have apartments that are subsidies. Okay, but as far as pro- when you think about projects, you talk, you think about the Nickerson Gardens, the Imperial Courts, the. Jordan Down projects, Aliso Village projects. We don't have massive projects in Compton. The biggest, what we would call a project would be Wilmington Arms, and that's a crypt set on Wilmington, right? But we don't have per se projects like that. Elm Street, all we are all on our paper own homes. Piru Street, when you go down Piru Street, you ain't gonna see dudes hanging out like I was over on Malcolm X and Martin Luther King last night. I've never seen that many Shout blacks. out to Martin Luther King. Southside, South, South, South Dallas, let's go. You've uh, never man. seen that many blacks. 415, I'm ne- and then it, and later it got, the more blacks was out there. Mm-hmm. We came one, my, uh, shout out to my partner, uh, 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 Bobby Love. Bobby Love, Bobby, shout Bobby out to Bobby Love. Love. Bobby Love took me through everything. I The first time I done really seen Dallas in a real light that he signed, man, it's something to see. Boy, man, man, yeah, yeah. I yeah. couldn't even take enough pictures. <laughs> I, I was amazed. This was this was LA in the 60s. Hey, black folks, man, everywhere. Black folks so everywhere. It's just like, man, you seen a flood of red, you seen young girls. I love young girls. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was it's a different atmosphere. Y- y'all hanging out. <laughs> They sitting there, they in the front yard slapping dominoes. You come through Compton after seven o'clock, you not gonna see nothing but Mexicans. Yeah. No blacks at all. You think, where they all at? In the zoo yeah, somewhere? Yeah, like where? Or in the museum, <laughs> you know? But why so, is that so? Where uh, they at? Be, we've evaporated. We start becoming other than self. And the, oh, I don't wanna live here anymore, so we move with Peckerwood. Oh, got you. Uh, we go to Moreno Valley, we go to the Temecula trying to get my kid away from this bad environment. Mm-hmm. And when your kid get there, he become the environment. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? He didn't come out the house in Compton, but when he gets to Rancho Cucamonga, he's a pyro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With white folks, nice ass in the penitentiary. Should have left him right there, Got and he would have been at a better place, you know? I, I, I remember uh, seeing you when Drake was out there in uh, Bumpton. Right, right. And. Some, it was it a something that caused him to have to flee the scene that day? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. One, one, what, what happened on that whole situation? Well, uh, uh, game, lead, lead me up to it. I want I, I, like like what the, happened? It, it, this well, game you know was progressive and he took uh, Brazil Street and it's a dead end street and he put his whole little operation there and they called it Black Wall Street. Okay, so that was that was Compton's Black Wall Street and everybody was over there and so. Uh, they did a Drake, a Drake and Game did a video, and they as they were doing the video, uh, they were sitting up doing the video and this and this and that. So uh, little Rob, one of another little Cedar Block homies, he him and Game had got into it, you know, the day before. So bruh pushed up like Game, like man, check this out, blood. We got to do this and this and this and this and that. So a uh, couple of people that claim to be, you know, with it. Uh, seen him with a gun in his pocket and fled to the back. He said, oh, I was just protecting my artist. I put this up and I did that. But you got the fuck out the way. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. You saw violence getting ready to happen and you wasn't with it like you say you was with it. So he took, because uh, uh, Drake wasn't really moving until this guy just grabbed him and he put him in the car, you know. And so another one of the homies, he got between it and settled it off. But, you know, and things went on. But, it's real in the field sometimes. Like, 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 I remember Jamie talking about when he was on the set with Plies and they were somewhere and, you know, the people hear Plies. This was years ago in L.A. They hear you saying, I'm, a, I'm about this life as a rapper and they want to challenge the fact to say, is you really about what you say you do in, a, in these songs? Like, like, so when you see a rapper or a rap group of people in the hood a lot of times the neighborhoods i even seen that i believe it was i want to say i can't remember which one in atlanta uh, it might have been the the baby the baby was down there and and 
the guys from the city came out because he was trying to do a video. Oh, you ain't let nobody know you was gonna be here. Mm -hmm. Like, is that a thing? Like in the neighborhoods up there, where if you do come out to do something, you better know somebody. Or you, you gotta know somebody. That's, that's the check-in policy. <laughs> Get your ass. You, you'll never know the temperature. That's just like uh, uh, one of my homies. He he. Uh, they they did security for Rick Ross, right? And Rick Rawson was doing a, a show in Detroit, and them Detroit boys wasn't having it. They shut the whole thing. No, dude, you just come in and you ain't paid nobody. You just can't come in there and do no show. They trying not to get taxed. Yeah, you're like, man, look, you, you ain't done nothing for us in Detroit. This is how we run this line. So get with the police and nothing else. This dude runs such a line in Detroit. He shut Rick Rawson whole performance down. Ain't nothing moving. But you would think, because what I think about is a bigger picture, meaning like when these people come and they video, do music videos or shows or whatever, that's bringing more light to your city. That's bringing, it's bringing more exposure. It's, it's not bringing no revenue to my city. Everybody talk about Compton. Everybody's, you, you, you rapping. We got no economical windfall from that. Out of 53 years of, of, of pie ruin, it's not a building that says pie ruin on it. That's bad economics. Mm -hmm. Everybody around, yeah, every comedian talk about Compton. You can't say nothing that it, it Compton, and we don't get no revenue for it. So we, you're not just using us, you misusing us. But if I don't argue about it, ain't nothing to be to do. I'll give you what you need, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just like the things that we do sometimes is not for our profit. And it never is with gang until we get a gang intelligence to be financially literate. You know, she did a, a hell of a thing with death row, but you went through 147 million dollars and got nothing to show for it. You didn't buy 20 houses in the mob, and I got to go into the mob and apologize for some of the homies that I made a reference in here on Boss Talk that the mob came out of a crip set, and I got scolded and corrected for that. Mm -hmm. That the mob did was never crips. Mobs was never crips. So I, 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 I recant that in a uh, public service announcement. Uh, don't choke me, Mob James. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm just trying to go mob. Bro. Shout out to Mob James, <laughs> the man. Mob. Um, the mob and, and, and B, they, they was on my head. Like, <laughs> Ma, what the hell you mean? Oh, man, we ain't never been no crip set. Man, you, I'm like, okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really, that's the history, though, and it's really something to where, because of so many people's lives that have been changed or, 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 you know, people have lost their lives, they do want to get the correct history on what people went through to create, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Right. You know, to make sure their legacy is told That's in a right. way that they remembered in the way that they were because they put their life on the line for it. Hold on, you know. It ain't like we put our life on the line. Everything you do, you have selfish motives. You know, if we put our life on the line, I should want to put my life on the line for something to embetter me. But at the time, don't you think that as these groups progressed, did they ever have a time when they was trying to do something positive? All of them had it at, at points. It gang, it, gang, me one. Gangs are people, right? So mm -hmm. there's never been food drives. There's never been turkey drives. There have never been things that they've done in the neighborhood. Nothing. It's some artist that's, that's done that, like uh, uh, TDD. He, uh, he does things every Christmas with the Nickerson Gardens, you know, and he brings an artist in and, and he, he does a hell of a Christmas giveaway and, and give all these toys, but does it change the mindset? You give me a toy to tear up. I, I, it's not doing nothing for me and my future. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So is that really giving back? You know, I get some shoes from, from uh, um, what's the name of that store? Um, Swish. The shoe warehouse. Yeah. Hey, they, the white folks donate them shoes, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a write-off to them. So they, you give a couple of shoes. And, okay, it's good. It's it's good for show, but are you doing anything for your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. You know, Michael Conception, he got a Michael Conception Foundation. This dude turned around as a crip. This dude does a lot of positive things under the low. Big Hugh, I don't even know him personally, but I know the things that he's done. 
and people try to show, they don't talk about that this, this man took a hundred black boys and bought them tuxedos and took them to dinner. They didn't know a, a, a soup spoon from a, a solid fork from anything else. But those type of little impressions last on you. You know what I'm saying? Well, you take somebody who ain't never had what they call church shoes on, they've been wearing tennis shoes all their life, and you dress them up, there's a different impression, you know? I had one of my little homies one time, we was in, a, in a, uh, the county jail in 4300, the blood module, and I came in, I had some uh, some burgundy loafers, you know? And he's like, Maury, you got them damn church shoes on. I'm like, bro, I'm a grown, I'm going to be wearing khakis and, 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 and flip-flops all my life, blood. I ain't going to never change. whoop the whoop the whim. I see him about six years later. He didn't got a wife, got a girlfriend. Night, man, I went to Vegas, boy. And I had to buy some slacks and my girl. But nice, the situation changed. You ain't in khakis no more. When you knew better, you do better. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I really... When you look back, you know, we, of course, we know we talked about Chris Brown on here, but Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy is another one that claimed Fruit Town, or, you know, I'm <laughs> being honest, it's like, like you got all of these different, y'all, you know, you got to understand, it's something about, it's fascinating. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah it is. It's like a, you know how you get a crystal ball or something that, uh, or if you get a cat and he sees some yarn, it just, it's fascinating to some of these guys, man, like, but to see them claim these these areas, I, I mean, I don't know. Originally, I don't know if this is why. I think he came that early on in life or whatnot. But Soldier Boy claims that that's that it. Have you ever seen him doing anything in the communities no, up there? But tell, you know. But it's they just put like it on the song. Once once you come in, it's just like you see in this candy, and, and it's amazing to you. And you look at it and it's so pretty and you open the package and it don't taste worth the shit. Like, damn, that wasn't all that. <laughs> so once they see us and see the core of who we are, they don't hang around. That's crazy because you, you it's just something because you can, it's a whole movement like where people make a lot of song, a lot of music. A lot, a lot of, of music. A lot of music, yeah. And it don't profit us. And if we talk to motherland, come in, you know, you gotta check in, you gotta do this, but what? Who wanna come to a park? You know, any man 45 years old, 50 years old, that's in the park every day is a pedophile. That's where children play. So you ain't got together enough so you can get a building. All the motorcycle clubs got clubhouses. You know what I'm saying? YMCA got a house. Why don't we have an edifice but if even if the what would you guys do if a rapper or people who are these entrepreneurs decided to reach out? It, what would be the first move? Even to get a building, and because these rappers now we got young people that are starving, that want to do some stuff, and they have nowhere to go. So if you for fifteen hundred dollars you can set up a studio and let young dudes from Crips or Pyrus or whatever in these section. When I grew up, they had. They called team posters. They used to take empty houses and make it where kids could come in in every neighborhood and they could represent and they could play, shoot pool, hang out. And they found out the creativity of that was so great. Once Crippen started, all of that got washed out. We don't have team posters anymore. We don't have sock hops anymore. We don't have parades like it was because they came in and start vandalizing stuff in their own neighborhoods and it cancel it out. So people don't feel safe you to bring your child out because people looking like you are doing shit to you. Mm -hmm. Kids can't go to Halloween. They snatching little kids' bags and stuff, you know. But you won't do that in the white community. So when you start ravaging our own, we lost a lot of traditional academics because of gang behavior. You know, let me ask. But, oh, go ahead. But then, to me, when situations like that happen and they're ravishing their own, it should almost feel like the the upper heads in that community or that gang or that whatever should step up to say, "This is against policy. This is against." But we rules. don't have no policy. It ain't no policy. It should have some it, it sort of. It should have, but it, I mean, it's you supposed to have. Well, but I'm protecting my hood. Right. Exactly. Yeah, but, but they say. People that are abused become abusers. 
Yeah, because the thing is that if y'all hate, you know, back then, you know, they're like, well, I don't like the police because they're in just, they unjustly do things and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. So in your own community, you're supposed to be policing the people around you so you don't need nobody else to come in to do what you already been doing. Policing the, each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? But by the same token, just like you say, it's more police kill us than us, but we won't attack the police. If you come through my hood, like, who is you? What? And I pull a strap out. But a police will come through by itself and everybody break and run. What's the difference in killing? I'm non-discriminate. Everybody can get it. You know what I'm saying? So when you have such, a, we still in possession of a slave mentality. And we'll do shit to each other, but we won't do it to the real oppressor. Well, man, you can't fight City Hall. How come you can't? I want to ask you about something that's, uh, Tory Lanez, you know, they convicted him and he's headed, he's headed to prison now. Um, he's, he's about 4'11". Mm -hmm. He weighs about a buck oh five. Um, he got 10 years for, convicted for shooting Megan Thee Stallion mm -hmm. in the feet. Um, they just sent him down. He tried to get a stay some type. Yeah. You've seen that. Uh, I, I heard, heard about it. Try, uh, uh, not, but, but now he's got to go, and this is supposed to be a hideous. Uh, uh, what county was that in? I don't. But it was in. I don't remember. I can look it up. But he got to go to prison. Okay. He got to go to an institution. We don't have prisons anymore. What institution? Yeah, Whatever the inmates. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's going, but they say he said today that he's in fear for his life. Okay. Uh, that would. That's intelligent. To say that, <laughs> he'll go in there. He'll be the he'll he'll, he'll, he'll Tory Lane gonna get a visit every day. He's gonna get a two hundred and forty dollars in his packages every day. He gonna be good because the dudes in prison they fans too. Mm -hmm. Okay, you dig what I'm saying? So it ain't like he coming in there. This is so cut though. He's not gonna go to a level five. He's not going to Pelican Bay. He's not going to Folsom nowhere. They take him to Donovan with with uh, uh, with Shug, set him somewhere, and that things don't go right. They don't have PC anymore. They call him S and Y. What's that? Uh, S and Y is sensitive needs. So oh. he's going to North Kern State Prison. Kern, Kern, Kern uh, that's it, up by Bakersfield. That's where you go. He may not stay in, in Kern. That's a, a Avenal, tell it all, Avenal, or... Um, that's Avenal. He won't go to Corcoran, but he may not even stay in Avenal. So he's scared for his life now. Okay. I mean, that's intelligent. Yeah, because he's never been. You know, but he'll be all right. Yeah. So it ain't, ain't, he's not trying to go up in there and be a bully. Mm -hmm. You know, like, shit, man, I'm in fear. So whatever happened to me, you know, when y'all's watch, I already told you. He says that it's, uh, it feels like he's going to be a target because of his celebrity status. Okay. There's a lot of celebrities go to prison. Yeah. So what but make him any different? He different. He know he he's playing the game. He go yeah. put me in a cell by myself. Let me have when you escort me back and forth to visit. Let me be on the top of the line. You know, put me work. Why would why would Tory Lane get a job working in the kitchen in prison? So, so he's, by he's, him he's according to him, he's out of Lane's is escorted to the showers mm -hmm. where he bathes by himself. Right. And if he chooses to spend time in the yard. He'll be the only one fenced in in that, in that area. Okay. You know, he's going to be in, and it says uh, they administrated him to SIG because of his high profile right. status. Which keeps him from a, a lordly apart from these he'll have, he'll have I, I was wrong. He's five foot three. Oh, yeah. Size, his, his size definitely is set back. A source says the inside adds he is a, a house with real uh, hardcore criminals, murderers. So he's really hoping that. His lawyers will be able to continue to fight for his freedom while he maintains his innocence. The whole thing is a mess. Mm -hmm. But for him doing all of that and for him being escorted and doing all of that, doesn't that wouldn't that make other inmates mad? Because he's just like not saying being a sissy, but it's like he's getting privileges. Wouldn't that make them upset? That doesn't affect any of the other prisoners? No. Or they don't care. I mean, it ain't got nothing. I mean, you may, you may say he a bitch ass nigga, but that's intelligence. Being escorted, I mean, that, escort to the shower. I want to stay safe. He yeah. had a hell of a time going. Look at that picture right there with him and Megan before. He, he should have stuck with that. 
Mm. Instead of instead of trying to do anything, I, now he had to leave all that yeah. to go. But see, and 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 and, and the amazing thing about that, <laughs> even what the situation is with him, how it could because he's so high profile. Anybody else? First, that's his first offense. Why didn't he get probation? Yeah. You understand me? Why did he get a year in the county jail like they would do? If I shot somebody, I may not go to prison. Even I got a sentence. I've been to prison before. But selective prosecution, because he's a black rapper, you dig what I'm saying? And it wasn't actually, I wasn't there. Allegedly, when the gun was shot, it ricocheted and hit her. He didn't just shoot her in the pinky toe like Harlem Knights. I wasn't there. But what I understand the bullet ricocheted accidentally or uh, whatever. He pulled it out, you know. But that's harsh 10 years for a first offense. Mm -hmm. For somebody, he don't have any gang ties. He don't have any priors. If a white boy did it, he wouldn't have got 10 years. No. You know? No. So they make an example out of him. No. I'd He'll be all right. Yeah, I, I, and like I said, I, I really, like I said, I, I hate to see him in that situation. You I know, mean, he, you know, all don't kill him and make him fight. He, he need that situation. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna get him right. Oh yeah, I mean, once he's thirty one now. So yeah. when he come out, when he come out in ten years, do you think he'll still be able to pop in his music? Well, he, he's not gonna do ten years. And more, I, I heard David Kenner, um, uh, Suge's ex attorney. Mm -hmm. Well, old man, he's old, old shyster. What he said, but. He, He's supposed to be trying to get him an appeal bond. So he may do a year, two years, oh, okay. and get out on a two, three hundred thousand dollars appeal bond and just stretch it out like Bootsy's rubber band. Mm. You know, you never hope oh, soon as this celebrity status fall off and they got another sucker, they'll let him out. He ain't mm -hmm. gonna he ain't gonna do the ten. What okay, um also I was gonna ask you about Bootsy and, and the gun charge. I seen you online talk about it just a little bit. They had caught, this was a while back, but it's still something he's dealing with. He's wearing a leg monitor now, mm -hmm. and he's basically uh, able to move around, perform, do whatnot. I'd never heard of someone getting, you know, caught, jammed up with the feds, and then being able to move around like that. That was a first for me. Oh but, yeah, well the feds, you know, and, and, and like you say, he was targeted, you know, and it just wasn't just no mere traffic stop. They knew who he was and what what was going on. And they supposed to have a picture of him in the rap uh, and doing his video and holding a gun. And then he got cracked with the gun. But they got a thing called Operation Safe Streets. And so instead of the the state taking it, and I said before on the pot, more than likely the feds is going to pick it up because under Operation Safe Street, interfering with commerce. Any known felon or gang member in possession of a weapon that wasn't made in that state is guilty of interfering with commerce. And it's a 25-year sentence. It's hard and to beat. So it's, it's, it's almost impossible to beat because all they have to find out that you are a felon and that the gun that you possess was not made in the state that you're in. Wow. Those are that's, the only. But basically, that's a lot of guns. Yeah, a lot of guns. You know, they made it for gangsters. It was robbing banks, interfering with commerce, shooting on a main street. You know what I'm saying? So they made the law for a, a commerce law, and it's and it's hard. It's hard to beat. It's it's hard to beat. You know. Yeah, he definitely. Uh, I had an attorney by the name of Milton Grimes, and Milton, we took it to trial. And I, uh, uh, Captain Shahid Muhammad and, and, and uh, Omar Bradley, the mayor of Compton, they was trying to get Omar, and by them trying to get Omar, when this incident happened, they tried to set me up uh, to turn on Omar. And so when they couldn't set me up, they turned the case over to the feds. Damn, what the hell? I'm not a federal, I don't do nothing, you know. So I, I got a commerce case, and man, I mean, I was shook. Like, man, you, it's hard to beat a commerce act. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, I'm just so stuck. And that's how I elevated my life to banks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I found out that using a gun is primitive. White folks been killing a long time with guns. So the only one profits off a gun charge is the undertaker. So whatever you do with a gun is primitive. He don't need to know that. But in looking at the crime, I was in the law library one day, and I was reading in the law library, and I was looking at computer fraud. 
like computer fraud. I said, what the hell is computer fraud? And I'm looking at computer fraud. And computer fraud, the first element, your first arrest, your first conviction of compu com computer fraud, stealing money out the bank. You can steal up to $80 million and the top crime is 48 months. Wow. So we get busted. Why they give you a long time for doing nothing? <laughs> you just in the way. I was arrested in Houston, Texas back in 1978 and my attorneys, uh, Adamo and Cobb, we were going to court one day and they said, Judge Pete Moore, he said he was sentencing this boy, was 18 years old, right? And the boy had a GTA, Grand Theft Auto. Him and his friend had stole a car, right? And Judge Pete Moore says they were trying to give him 60 years and he pled to 30 years. Mm for stealing a car, right? And Judge Pete Moore, white America woke my eyes up. He said, son, I'm sentencing you to TDC, Texas Department of Correction, for Grand Theft Auto. He said, Marvin Zidler is a, a car company, Chevy dealer in Houston, Texas. Marvin Zidler sells 2,000 cars a month and you, took a car from a 65 year old lady that had to take her husband to dialysis. And I make you a menace to your community, not Post River Oaks. You took some old shit from some niggas that needed it. So you are a minister. So we gonna let you pick cotton for 30 years. Wow. Because if you get your head right and you start stealing for us, we gonna have a problem. Wow. But you could have stole a brand new car and they probably wouldn't even missed it. But you took something that some, somebody go in your house and steal your TV. You're going to fight for your shit. And they can go to Walmart and put it in a basket and walk right on out. A brand new one. huh? That's real. And it's a tax write-off. But it's easy for us to ravage each other. I'm going to kill for my shit. Everything but my girlfriend. I ain't killing her for her. You understand? Know, my property. Uh, first crip killing in Los Angeles. Or in California. The first actual crip killing, everybody will say it's the Baloo. It was the first noted okay. crip killing in 1972. Howard Baloo, his son was a, uh, uh, his, his father was a, a prominent black lawyer. And they had a record hop at the Hollywood Palladium. And some crips stomped him to death. But before that in 1969 at uh, Taco Tia on 43rd, 41st and Central, one of the guys coming from the Pueblo Projects had a red waistline leather coat and they stomped him to death. And that was the first killing. Why did, why, either one of those, why did that happen? Why did they? Because they were taking their, and with the Baloo, everybody talk about it was Baloo, Baloo had a suit on, but his friend had a leather coat on. And the Chris was trying to take dude's leather coat and he intervened and they beat him to death. Right? So this is what we talk about ravaging your own community. They started taking tennis shoes and taking coats from them. You work hard, your mother worked hard to buy you this. Instead of them going to Sears or JC Penney's and stealing them from the stove, they want to take it from you. You know, the the wrong concept of each other. You know? So that ravishing and people start wanting to protect themselves. So they mount it up. We ain't letting y'all just do this. Some people just ain't having it. Just because I ain't out the projects don't mean I ain't gonna fight for my shit. You that's know? real, that's real. What? Oh, when did the Crips and the blood start even actually having issues? At, like I said, the five nine brims, and they, they, were, they wore stingy brims, and they had red matches around their hat. Okay. And they had a, 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 a thing at the LA Coliseum, I was the Battle of the Band. And the Crips thought that they just gonna run over these dudes. And they I wasn't remember you saying it. that. Yeah, and they wasn't having it. And so they, they gathered up and they start having squabbles with the Crips and then it led on to the bounty hunters involving themselves, uh, the city stones, uh, they were just peace stones at the time. And the city stones, and then you had the, the 20s, and the 20s was uh, Hoover families. And, and then when the Hoover Crips thing, they went over to neighborhood 20s. And so the blood gang start protecting themselves from the Crips, mm. you know? And so it just mushroomed. 
But where you have all of these different um, gangs, like even in the, whether the Crips or the Piru or the Bloods, they always have so many different sets, mm -hmm. like, like you're naming. Are those, all those sets created because just like when we talk about the Bible or the churches, the things that are created, like the um, Catholic, Anglican, Episcopal, all this other stuff, is because of something that they did not agree with, with what that first church was doing. Right. So they created something. It's the same right. thing with the gangs, same where thing the gang. something that they didn't agree with, and they say, you know what, I'll just go it's create just my like own. When you talk about Christianity, uh, oh. King James, mm -hmm. uh, England, was under Catholicism. Right. And it was total Catholicism. So King James wanted to divorce his wife, and, and he, asked, to. he mm -hmm. asked the Pope, and the Pope said, we don't deal with no, no, no divorce here, so they used the Gothic Bible. Mm -hmm. So King James had 24 scribes, and he rewrote the Bible, the King James Version of the Bible, and they were the first Episcopalians. Right. The Scottish didn't want to change, so they became protesters, and they became Protestants. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So these is all created from political concepts, not religious views. You feel what I'm saying? So by the same token, but they all call themselves believing in the same book, but they have different philosophies. You know, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Jehovah Witness, it, it came behind a joke in 1919. Judge Rutherford it was talking about Jehovah, right? And so you, when you talk about it in the same way, you know, damn, count the name of 10 square miles. And we got from, now you, fruit town was just fruit town at one time. Now you got 500 block, everybody got their own block. You know what I'm saying? You got this insane, you got this, uh, now everybody create their own little sections. But by doing so and having all that, um, it's like we're creating our own segregation. Yeah, we're trying to get away from slavery, and slavery had all the separation and stuff like that, but now we're creating our own separation by having all these different um, sets and all these different religions well, and all this everything. Even and it's uh, to, to um, whether kill each other or argue with each other or feel like I'm right, you're wrong, whatever, and cause conflict and not realizing the biggest thing in the middle of all of this, whether gang, religion, or whatever, is a devil. Okay. You see what I mean? To cause conflict for us to kill each other. Okay. But by you talking about the devil, the devil only suggests. He ain't said shit to you. You go on and do it. Mm -hmm. You understand know I me? Mean? We lie on the devil all the time. Poor devil, he just doing what he do. Wow. And and he suggested, and when he tell a lie, he said, well, did he tell you? In, in, in Islam, it says that Prophet Muhammad went, went to Iblis to talk to the devil. And he said that he was commissioned by God, Allah, to tell Prophet Muhammad the truth. Whatever you tell him, tell him the truth. And Prophet Muhammad asked the devil, he says, if my believers ask you a question, so-and-so, what do you tell him? He said, Muhammad, first I tell him the truth. He said, but if he asks you again, what do you tell him? He says, then I tell him a story. He said, but then if he persists and asks you again, then he said, I tell him an outright lie. And he says, your followers believe the lesser before they believe the first. Uh. You know what I'm saying? It's just like me, I say, hey, uh, E. Let me have a thousand dollars. Nigga, I ain't got no thousand dollars for you. Man, yeah, I came all the way out here, man. Come on, give me a thousand. You said, wait, man, let me, I gotta talk to my wife about it. Now you done told me the story, right? Man, she caught, man, Jamaica, no, I'm, I'm good for the money. He said, let me talk to, well, Mar, come back tomorrow, meet me at Chase Bank. I get to the bank, you don't show up. I'm mad as fuck. And you told me to lie, I believe the lie. <laughs> but you told me the truth from the beginning. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I ain't giving you shit. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So we get involved in the commercialism of lies. The the TV empty us lies and we like that better than the truth. The news have never told you I'm going to tell you the truth. They say I'm going to tell you the top stories of the day. <laughs> wow. I got to ask you about uh, Tupac. Um, he would use, he'll say M-O-B. You know, he always which we, I tell people all the time, it could be money over bitches, but it could also be member of the bloods. There's a lot of different things, but people, he would wear red, he was hanging with uh, Suge, people affiliated him with the bloods. Give me a lowdown. The Pyrus. Uh, yeah, with the Pyrus. So, M-O-B, his was money over bitches. That's what he stood for in his life. 
Okay. You know, what what you thought was created, he was an artist. And in, and through this artistry, he dealt with Dre, he dealt with 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 uh with Snoop. You know, and, and and he was influenced a lot. You know, we have so many, no matter how brilliant we are, we have so many insecure characteristics. And everybody want to be with a winning team. You walk by yourself, when we, we walk in, it's a hundred of us. You wasn't banging yesterday, but now your chest stuck out. <laughs> because everybody want to be a part of a winning team. You know what I'm saying? So he when didn't nobody else accept him when they threw him away and put him in jail, Shug came and got him. So he dealt with loyalties, like bitch, when wasn't nobody else fucking with me. Now, now, now I'm hot. <laughs> Was it Mike Jones? <laughs> <laughs> but but you, you, you bring up a valid point, Shug, when you say Shug, that's who we seen him in the car with when he gets shot. And people say when he dies out there, he shouldn't have got in the gang business when they see him with fighting at the you know at the casino that night. Mm -hmm. He should have stayed out of gang business, man. I wish he didn't go. He's with the people that he was loyal to at right. that time. Everybody can always. There's some niggas gonna tell me, oh man, I knew he when he wasn't nothing. You know, he, so so he's something now though. <laughs> You, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, he should have stayed with, with, with Sapphire. You know, I don't know why he married that Jamaican woman. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You, know, you say she cooked good. I don't think she cooked that good, you know? <laughs> so we always have naysayers. What should have happened? What could have happened? But when it was there, you didn't change shit. And today, you ain't changed shit yet. You just got conversation. You know what I'm saying? We can all talk about the mistakes that Suge made, but did he make, ain't nobody honed him and told him how to be successful. He was winging it. He was being rich at Hockley, you know, being loyal to people that wasn't loyal to him. Being something that he really wasn't. He the only non-gang member, he ain't never, Suge ain't never told on nobody. He was told on him, but he's never told on him. He kept the code. What not? I'd have been told on y'all asses. <laughs> Tupac was like I said. He when he went and got Pac, it was basically a thing to me where when Pac came home and started doing that music, man, you heard him on. Now I heard him on his first music, and it was good. Don't get me wrong, but when he got out of jail, when he got out of prison, he did that double that double CD. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That thing went so crazy. It did. You couldn't skip. You didn't have to skip now. Song. A lot of times, right. the East Coast don't really even you know talk about it. Of course, the a lot of the record labels and stuff stay away from it. But it was one of the hardest albums yes, that you will hear when you hear a uh, a uh, I wonder why they call you bitch. Mm -hmm. You know, all these songs is on this album, man. Uh, uh, I won't deny it. I'm a straight rider. You don't want to fuck with me. Like all of these songs is on here. You could go. Song for song, uh, uh, and and and, and, and it, it don't held, miss. Yeah, it it held something in you, made you feel something. Yeah, oh, I enjoyed it. You know I ain't gonna sit up yeah. and play with you yeah. about it. Yeah. I yeah. can play it tonight, and it's gonna go same all night. Thing. Same thing. I mean, <laughs> twenty years later, same, same. thing. It, you they know? was on to something huge, yeah. and and you and, know and, it. And even with Biggie, you know, the, the Ten Crack Commandments, I got yeah. to give it to the East Coast. Yeah. I mean, Big had his shit, you know. Yeah, Biggie, both of them. I believe Iron Sharpens Iron. You know, it's and, just like, And that competition that was there at the end, for sure, when you start looking at those albums so at the it end. it wasn't no accident both of them killed. That was a plot. That was a plot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To get them out the way. It ain't been nothing like them since. I mean, Kevin Gates, all these dudes, they good. J. Cole, but don't nobody hold my interest like they did. No, no, them boy. That but you can play their records right now today and some youngsters is with it. Pac talked about death a lot in his yeah. music, bro. That yeah. was one of his main subjects was death. And, and, and then Biggie's last album uh -huh. was Life After Death. Yeah, life After Death. Nobody wants you to tell you dead. <laughs> Nobody wants to do it like, well, hey, man, thank you so much, man. I, I always enjoy the conversation, man. Again, we got we to gotta end this thing right. Like, how can people get a hold of you if they looking for Ayatollah Mar? Ayatollah Mar. Uh, the, the Jamaican queen just showed me I got an Instagram page. <laughs> shit, I'm on it. Shit, Pots Grow Farms. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm elevating. 
I'm creating messing with boss talk one on one. One on one is a basic Compton, uh, a college intelligence. When That's you gotta right. go through one on one before you even get a PhD or EHD or BS or anything, you gotta go through one on one. Boom. You understand me? So we give they're giving you the basic letter uh, of intelligent verbalization every time. And they got bad motherfuckers like me. I just look <laughs> like this now. I got some shit. So, Man. Yeah, Potts Grove Farms, Ayatollah Marv on YouTube. I'm getting back on YouTube. I, I had a channel and my feelings got hurt with some of that bullshit y'all was talking. And I had to, because my feelings get hurt easily. And fuck with me if you want to. <laughs> but yeah, I'm on Facebook. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm gonna and if you wanna fuck with me just get in contact with Boss Talk Boss Talk 101 call me yeah, up yeah. send donations and they'll go shoot down. me my stash the, uh, <laughs> hit and like and uh, send stars up and what's some other things that you get that you get the money for all that oh, shit oh yeah donations <laughs> donations hey but I'm gonna ask you this before you get off of here man like to have that title and people it's everywhere now the oldest living Piru like, did you ever see that ever coming to be a thing? No. No, it just... Like, you see what I'm saying? I just said it, but I'm the oldest active... I, I'm the oldest Piru. Ain't nobody 73 years old. No. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So it became an accolade, and some people try, well, man, you ain't this and you ain't that, but you can't prove it. I can prove that I was. I was in Compton before mo all of them was born out of Compton. All Pyru says, I'm older than Baba Louie, I'm older than Putin, you know, I'm older than any. The only ones older than me is Harold Bowen, and he's Mr. Pyru, that's the general. But he ain't active no more. He's sitting back and retired, and I took the mantle. Wow. Know? So, yeah, it's a, it's an accolade of me. A lot of people try to look at it as a slander. I'm just, man, a dude that told me the other day, like, uh, uh, hey man, yeah, I see you on the podcast, man. You talk about you the oldest Pyru. Man, look, we had the Pyru boys here on this side, and man, you know, that's the new side, and we, I said, well, who are you? Man, I'm Stuart, and I do this. I said, but nobody know you, Stuart. Shut your motherfucking mouth. <laughs> Oh yeah, you right, you right, oh, Come and try to get with me. Shut your ass. No, nah, man, you, you you different, man. They better sit back and stop playing, man. I told him about Ayatollah Marvin's in the building, Boss Talk 101, man. We appreciate you. We love you, man. Thank you. Say, man, if people have to go back, let me ask you this. If people want to make a documentary and, and they was gonna make a documentary about you, but you couldn't say anything about it, what would you want that documentary to say about you? If people wanted to make a documentary about, about you, me, and you couldn't I'm say gonna, I'm going to say something, because no, y'all going to lie on me. You're not here to say anything. To say nothing, if what you, would you have do? passed on to the afterlife and you're not here, what would you want people to remember about you? What would you want people you? to remember about you? What would I want them to remember about me? That I didn't like kids? <laughs> 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 uh, if what would I want them to remember about me? Oh, what? That, that because they're gonna do a show. Bam! We want to tell you this is what we think about the oldest living Piru Ayatollah. A Mar. movie or a documentary? This is what we. What would one one thing that you would want them to say about you? That um, I grew up believing in black people, and that. I carried that all the way to my dying day, being unapologetically black. I don't care what Mexicans do. I don't care what Chinamans do. That's their platform that I tried to liberate and recreate as many black minds as I could. And to do the best that I could, to, if I couldn't, lot couldn't get one. And if before I die, if I could just get one, to elevate themselves. That Pac said, with all the millions of people I got, if I could just get one to turn around. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that one to have us, not just a life, I'm talking about a spiritual life. You know what I'm saying? That in Islam it says, if you can turn one person to being a believer with their heart, you're guaranteed paradise. Wow. You don't have to do anything. If you can get one person to believe, and not a Muslim, a believer, 
It don't say, oh, you Christian, oh, you Jew, oh, you Muslim. It says, oh, you believer. And if you can get one person, Lot couldn't get one, not even his wife. She turned around and started mm -hmm. twerking. You hear what I'm saying? So I think that, I believe, that's what I'd want you to know about me other than anybody else that I tried. Wow. You know? May not accomplish, but I tried. You know? So, Man. Thank you so much. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. <laughs>